Okay, 2.4 algebraic reasoning. Um, if you know your algebra, this is going to be a whole lot of review in this section. Um, it's some of the basic properties in algebra. Um, but we're going to do some, uh, some light algebraic proofs, and that's going to get us ready for doing geometric proofs. So first up, we've got all of these properties of equality. So the first one is the addition property of equality. So I've got a very simple equation here, A equals B. And the idea with the addition property of equality is that you can add the same thing to both sides of an equation and you'll still get um, a true equation, right? If, if A equals B, then A plus C is going to equal B plus C. I added the same thing to both sides, okay? So another example, if X equals 3, then x plus 5 is going to equal 3 plus 5, right? I can add 5 to both sides of the equation and it will still be true, okay? Subtraction properties the exact same idea, except that you're subtracting the same thing from both sides of the equation, okay? Won't go through with an example there, but you could do the same thing, right? I could have written the same thing with subtracting 5 on both sides, okay? Multiplication property of equality is when we multiply both sides of an equation by the same thing. So I can multiply both sides by C. So really I'm multiplying the entire equation by C, right? Um, okay. Um, and then the division property, we can divide both sides by the same thing. I could use the division symbol or I can do my division as a uh, fraction. So I think that's what I'm going to do here. So I had A equals B, but then I just divided both sides by C. There's the division property of equality. Okay. All right, the substitution property of equality um, says that if you have two things that are equal to each other, then you can substitute them in for each other into any equation. So I'm going to say then you can substitute A for B into any equation. Okay. Or vice versa, I could sub B in for A, okay? The distributive property is not a property of equality because we're not doing the same thing to both sides of an equation. But this is when I'm multiplying into um, parentheses. And then inside the parentheses, you need more than one term. You could have two or three or four or five terms in there. But when you're multiplying the whole parentheses, you can distribute the multiplication. So um, this is going to equal um, B times A plus C times A. Or, you know, you could call this just AB and AC or something like that, okay? Um, so, yeah, that'll come in handy um, a lot of times when we've got something like this. Okay, because X plus 3, I can't simplify inside the parentheses there, but I can rewrite this without parentheses at all, which is considered simpler. So I can simplify this whole thing a little bit um, 2 times 3 would be 6, so there we go, right? I just used the distributive property, okay? All right, and then we've got um, the symmetric property of equality. Okay, I had to pause there because I realized I left something off of my sheet. The symmetric property um, says that if A equals B, then B equals A. Okay, so that means I can take an equation. So if x plus 2 equals 13, then I can take that equation and flip it around over the, um, over the equal sign. Then 13 is going to equal x plus 2. Okay, that's the symmetric property of equality. Okay, what I had forgotten on my sheet, but I'll make sure it's on the one you're using, is the reflexive property of equality. Okay. Um, and this says that anything equals itself. Which seems 
kind of silly. It's kind of, of course, something is going to be equal to itself. Um, but it becomes super useful in, in geometry in a little while, okay? So, you know, the number 3 equals the number 3. It equals itself. A equals A. Or the, the measure of an angle can equal itself. So the measure of angle um, B is going to be equal to the measure of angle B. Seems kind of strange that you need a property for that, but it does come in very useful when we're doing um, geometric proofs. Okay, And then we've got the transitive property of equality. This says if A equals B and B equals C, well, hey, both of these things are equal to B, so that means the A and the C are going to be equal to each other. So you can um, cut out the middleman, kind of, right? Right. Uh, uh, so, you know, if I have the same birthday as Abe Lincoln and Abe Lincoln has the same birthday as Beyonce, well, that means I have the same birthday as Beyonce because we both have the same birthday as Abe Lincoln. Okay, it's just that kind of idea. Um, okay, so there are, there's uh, your basic properties. So, um, the first part of first type of problem you get on this section is just uh, identifying the property. So we're going to identify from that list, and you might want to just have that list out when you're doing these, right? Name the property illustrated. So this says if the measure of angle 6 is equal to the measure of angle 10, then the measure of angle 10 is equal to the measure of angle 6. Well, we've taken this equation and flipped it around over the equal sign, okay? So the two that I find get mixed up the most are symmetric and reflexive because they kind of sound similar in a way. Um, but um, this one is flipping over the equal sign. That's going to be the symmetric property of addition. Of, not of addition, of equality. Um, okay. And a lot of times what I, I will do, and other teachers will too, instead of writing out property of equality, I'm just going to do that as a shorthand. It's the symmetric property of equality. It is important to somehow um, notate that it's a property of equality because later on there's properties of congruence which are different. Okay, So it becomes more important to make that distinction when we've hit those other ones, but it's a good habit to get into it to always say it's a property of equality if it is. Okay, And here we have something equal equaling itself, so that would be an example of the reflexive property of equality. Okay. Look at your reflection. You're, you are you. You're, you are equal to you. Just like 34 degrees looks in the mirror and it equals 34 degrees. Okay. Um, this one's um, interesting. So I've got um, measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2. Then the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 5. So hey, these are both equal to angle 2, the measure of angle 2. So they're equal to each other. So that would be um, the, uh, the transitive property of equality, okay? But you could also make an argument, well, what if I took this, those two things are equal to each other, so I could then in this equation, I can, um, and those two things are equal. So then I, in this equation, for the measure of angle 2, I could substitute in the measure of angle 1, right? So you could make an argument that this is substitution, that I took one of these equations and substituted into it to get that third equation. So in this instance, you could also say that that's an illustration of the substitution property of equality. Okay? And if, you're, um, if you are abbreviating here, don't just put sub because that could be substitution or subtraction, right? So when you're um, abbreviating, make sure you get far enough so that we can tell the difference between substitution and subtraction. These aren't interchangeable. They're not the same thing, but a lot of times either one will work. If one of them works, the other will. Not always, but sometimes. Okay? All right. So let's put these to use. So... Um, this is a very simple algebraic equation, and we're going to solve for x, okay? Actually, we're not going to solve for x because someone's already done it, some nice person, right? So I can already see x equals 9, okay? This is that nice person's work. 
all we're going to do is justify the steps, okay? So I'm going to say what's happening to the equation as we go down the line here, okay? So we're going to start off with this equation. I'm just going to draw an arrow over here so it's clear what justification goes with what step, okay? So now you've got to think of this like this. Nothing has happened yet, right? It's just an equation. So that, if this were a math book, that would just be the problem in the math book. So no properties have been used yet. It's just a given problem. So the first justification is always just given. They have to give you something to start with. So that's pretty much always the first um, justification in a problem like this, okay? And then I'm thinking, well, what's changed? Well, that's changed, right? Five has been added to both sides of the equation, and that means that this is the addition property of equality. Okay, I'm going to do some abbreviating here. That's, I mean, addition property of equality there. Okay. And then I'm thinking, okay, what's happened next? So, um, what's happened is that the fives went away on the left side, right? So what happened is these two parts got added together. Negative 5 plus 5 equals nothing. And then 13 plus 5 equals 18. Okay, so some people might think, oh, you actually did the addition, so this is the addition property of equality. But it's not. What we're doing is simplifying negative 5 plus 5. We're doing the arithmetic, and we're doing 13 plus 5. So when you're changing 13 plus 5 into 18, you're not adding the same thing to both sides of the equation. We're just working on this side of the equation, right? So um, we're taking, um, you can call this simplify. You could also call it combine like terms. It depends on the person and the teacher. I don't care. Both th those are both good descriptions to me um, of what we're doing here. You definitely don't need both of those, but either one would work. Okay, because these are like terms. You're just combining them, right? And the same thing happened on the left side. Okay. And then next step, we're dividing both sides by two. So this is the division property of equality. Division property of equality, okay? And last step, we're simplifying again. 2x divided by 2 equals x. 18 divided by 2 equals 9. So this would be simplify. Okay? All right, for the next example, the only difference is that we're going to do our own work. So, you know, it hasn't already been worked out. So we're going to do the steps and the justifications to go with each one. So you can go ahead and pause it and try it out if you like. I'm going to get straight into it. So um, first justification, that's just the given problem. Okay. So I'm going to do all of the work first and then I'll justify. Well, I guess I'll just justify it as I go. Um, so we actually have two options here. I think most people would probably distribute the two because we're kind of used to doing that, but you could also divide the whole equation by two, and that would also get rid of the two, okay? So um, this is gonna give me two x plus two equals negative four, and that is the distributive um, property. We didn't really do anything over the equal sign, we only were working on one side, so that's just the distributive property. I'm not going to write out the word property. It, these are all properties, okay, unless it says given or simplify, okay. Um, all right, and then next I'd want to, I'm trying to get the x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, okay, and that's going to give me 2x. So for me, you don't have to write out 2x plus 2 minus 2 and negative 4 minus 2. We can just say, okay, I'm subtracting 2 there, I'm subtracting 2 here. So I'd be okay with you step, skipping a step where you write out the whole thing again with the minus 2's on both sides. And so what I've done to get from that step to that step is subtract. So this is the subtraction property of equality. And notice how I got far enough there that I could tell that it's subtraction, not substitution, right? Okay, and next I would divide both sides by 2. Okay, and again, I didn't write out a step where I showed the division on both sides. 
You could if you wanted to, but you don't need to for me. So this is the division property of equality. And there it is. And that's the end of the section. See you next time.